In the last lesson, having, having gotten the general shape of the f of x function, which would be this, from the marginal, we were left with three possibilities. I've slightly redrawn them on the upper right. can label them 1, 2, and 3. The characteristic of possibility number 1 is that f of 0 is a negative number. In other words, where the function starts at the value of x equals 0 is a negative number. The characteristic of possibility 2 is that f of 0 is equal to 0. And the characteristic of possibility 3 is that f of 0 is positive. So that's the remaining question to ask. We got the shape from the marginal, but we don't know whether it should start at a negative number, like in possibility 1, at 0, like in possibility 2, or at a positive number, like in possibility 3. So just to be clear, these are different possibilities for the f of x that generated the average and marginal on the left, and we need to figure out which one is correct. To do this, we need to use information from the average. Here's why. If possibility 1 were correct, and we don't know whether it is or not, let's think about what the average would be at x equals 0. To get the average at x equals 0, we would draw a line from the function value to the origin, and then ask, what is the slope of that line? And the slope of that line is minus infinity. So if possibility 1 were correct, then the average at x equals 0 would be minus infinity. Let me skip possibility 2 for a minute. If possibility 3 were the correct one, let's figure out what the average would be at x equals 0. It would be a line from the origin to the value of the function, and then calculate its slope. That, slope has a, that line has a slope of infinity. So if possibility 3 co were correct, then the average at x equals 0 would be plus infinity. If possibility 2 is correct, it's a little hard to see what the average at x equals 0 would be. We know how to get the average at other points, just drawing lines from the origin to the function value. But as x gets closer and closer to 0, those lines get smaller and smaller. And at x exactly equal to 0, that line has a length of 0. And of course, you can't find the slope of a line that has a length of 0, because it's just a dot. But what we can say is that, that the average at x equals 0 here need not be plus or minus infinity. It's probably something else. It might be plus or minus infinity, but that's a fairly unlikely possibility. Now let's go back to the original graph with average and marginal and see what we know about the average at x equals 0. Well, x equals 0 is here, and we know what the value at x equals 0 is. Now, if you use the numbers 1 and 2, then this average would be something like, well, somewhere between 1 and 2, but we know that 1 and 2 are just fake numbers. They're fictional numbers. They were just to help me sketch the graph. So we don't really know what the average at x equals 0 is, but we know that it's not plus infinity, and we're sure not negative infinity. It's some this is some positive number. So it can't be, the answer can't be possibility 1, because the average at x equals 0 for possibility 1 would have to be minus infinity, and this thing here is not equal to minus infinity. It's not possibility 3 either, because the average at x equals 0 there would have to be plus infinity, and, and this thing isn't, isn't plus infinity either. It's some finite number. And so therefore, we conclude that the av that the that it has to be possibility 2. We rule out 1, we rule out 3, and so 2 is the right answer. So in this way, we conclude that 2 is the right answer, that the shape drawn in 2 
is the one that gave rise to the average and marginal that we graphed with the blue and orange lines on the left. Now, you can see that this is a rather difficult technique, but it's also really easy to check yourself. If you started out with the, the average and marginal, that is this, this graph over here, and you think you figured out the correct answer, which is number 2, then what you can do is start with number 2, start with the f of x, and see if you can get back to the average and marginal that you started with. And if you can, then it was correct. And if you can't, then you made a mistake. So whereas going from average and marginal to total is somewhat difficult, checking yourself is pretty easy.